Be warned in time, Luca. Mend your manners. I know the mistress. She is so grand that she never dreams that any servant could dare to be disrespectful to her. But if she once suspects that you are defying her, out you go. I do defy her. I will defy her. What do I care for her? If you quarrel with the family, I never can marry you. It's the same as if you quarreled with me. You take her part against me, do you? I shall always be dependent on the goodwill of the family. When I leave their service and start a shop in Sofia, their custom will be half my capital. Their bad word would ruin me. You have no spirit. I should like to see them dare say a word against me. I should have expected more sense from you, Luca. But you're young, you're young. Yes, and you like me the better for it, don't you? But I know some family secrets they wouldn't care to have told, young as I am. Let them quarrel with me if they dare. Do you know what they would do if they heard you talk like that? What could they do? Discharge you for untruthfulness. Who would believe any stories you told after that? Who would give you another situation? Who in this house would there be seen speaking to you ever again? How long would your father be left on his little farm? Child, you don't know the power such high people have over the like of you and me when we try to rise out of our poverty against them. Look at me. Ten years in their service. Do you think I know no secrets? I know things about the mistress that she wouldn't have the master know for a thousand levers. I know things about him that she wouldn't let him hear the last of for six months if I blabbed them to her. I know things about Raina that would break off a match with Sergius if- How do you know? I never told you. So that's your little secret, is it? I thought it might be something like that. Well, you take my advice and be respectful. And make the mistress feel that no matter what you know or don't know, they can depend on you to hold your tongue and serve the family faithfully. That's what they like, and that's how you'll make most out of them. You have the soul of a servant, Nicola. Yes, that's the secret of success in service. Holo, holo there, Nicola. Master, back from the war. My word for it, Luca, the war's over. Off with you and get some fresh coffee. You'll never put the soul of a servant into me. Breakfast out here, huh? Yes, sir. The mistress and Miss Raina have just gone in. Go in and say I've come. And get me some fresh coffee. It's coming, sir. Have you told the mistress? Yes, she's coming. Well, the Servians haven't run away with you, have they? No, sir. That's right. Have you brought me some cognac? Here, sir. That's right. My dear Paul, what a surprise for us. Have they brought you fresh coffee? Yes, Luke has been looking after me. The war's over. The treaty was signed three days ago at Bucharest. And the decree for our army to demobilize was issued yesterday. The war over? Paul, have you let the Austrians force you to make peace? My dear, they didn't consult me. What could I do? But of course, we saw to it that the treaty was an honorable one. It declares peace. Peace? But not friendly relations, remember that. They wanted to put that in, but I insisted on its being struck out. What more could I do? You could have annexed Serbia and made Prince Alexander Emperor of the Balkans. That's what I would have done. I don't doubt it in the least, my dear. But I should have had to subdue the whole Austrian Empire first. And that would have kept me too long away from you. I missed you greatly. Ah. <sighs> and how have you been, my dear? Oh, my usual sore throats, that's all. That comes from washing your neck every day. I've often told you so. Nonsense, Paul. I don't believe in going too far with these modern customs. All this washing can't be good for the health. It's not natural. There was an Englishman at Philippopolis who used to wet himself all over with cold water every morning when he got up. Disgusting! 
It all comes from the English. Their climate makes them so dirty that they have to be perpetually washing themselves. Look at my father. He never had a bath in his life, and he lived to be 98, the healthiest man in Bulgaria. I don't mind a good wash once a week to keep up my position, but once a day is carrying the thing to a ridiculous extreme. You are a barbarian at heart still, Paul. I hope you behaved yourself before all those Russian officers. I did my best. I took care to let them know that we had a library. Ah, oh, but you didn't tell them that we have an electric bell in it. I have had one put up. What's an electric bell? You touch a button, something tinkles in the kitchen, and then Nikola comes up. Why not shout for him? Civilized people never shout for the servants. I've learned that while you were away. Well, I'll tell you something I've learned too. Civilized people don't hang out their washing to dry where visitors can see it. So you'd better have all that put somewhere else. Oh, that's absurd, Paul. I don't believe really refined people notice such things. There, Serges. Hello, Nicola. Oh, don't shout, Paul. It really isn't nice. Bosh! Nicola! Yes, sir? If that is Major Saranoff, bring him round this way. Yes, sir. You must talk to him, my dear, until Raina takes him off our hands. He bores my life out about our not promoting him over my head, mind you. He certainly ought to be promoted when he marries Raina. Besides, the country should insist on having at least one native general. Yes, so that he could throw away whole brigades instead of regiments. It's no use, my dear. He has not the slightest chance of promotion until we are quite sure that the peace will be a lasting one. Major Sergius Saranoff. Here already, Sergius. Glad to see you. My dear Sergius. My dear mother, if I may call you so. Mother-in-law, Sergius. Mother-in-law. Sit down and have some coffee. Thank you. None for me. You look superb, splendid. The campaign has improved you. Everybody here is mad about you. We were all wild with enthusiasm about that magnificent cavalry charge. Madam, it was the cradle and the grave of my military reputation. How so? I won the battle the wrong way when our worthy Russian generals were losing it the right way. That upset their plans and wounded their self-esteem. Two of the colonels got their regiments driven back on the correct principles of scientific warfare. Two major generals got killed, strictly according to military etiquette. Those two colonels are now major generals, and I am still a simple major. You shall not remain so, Sergius. The women are on your side, and they will see that justice has done you. It is too late. I have only waited for the peace to send in my resignation. <laughs> Your resignation? Oh, you must withdraw it. I never withdraw. Now, who could have supposed you were going to do such a thing? Everyone that knew me. But enough of myself and my affairs. How is Raina? And where is Raina? Raina is here. Pretty, isn't it? She always appears at the right moment. Yes. She listens for it. It is an abominable habit. Dear father, welcome home. My little pet girl. And so you're no longer a soldier, Sergius. I am no longer a soldier. Soldiering, my dear madam, is the coward's art of attacking mercilessly when you are strong and keeping out of harm's way when you are weak. That is the whole secret of successful fighting. Get your enemy at a disadvantage, and never, on any account, fight him on equal terms, eh, Major? They wouldn't let us make a fair stand-up fight of it. However, I suppose soldiering has to be a trade like any other trade. Precisely. But I have no ambition to succeed as a tradesman, so I have taken the advice of that bagman of a captain that settled the exchange of prisoners with us at Pirot and given it up. What? That Swiss fellow? Sergius, I've often thought of that exchange since. He overreached us about those horses. Of course he overreached us. 
His father was a hotel and livery stable keeper, and he owed his first step to his knowledge of horse dealing. Ah, he was a soldier. Every inch a soldier. If only I had bought the horses for my regiment instead of foolishly leading it into danger, I should have been a field marshal now. Swiss? What was he doing in the Serbian army? A volunteer, of course. Keen on picking up his profession. Blech. We shouldn't have been able to begin fighting if these foreigners hadn't shown us how to do it. We knew nothing about it, and neither did the Serbians. Egad, there'd have been no war without them. Are there many Swiss officers in the Serbian army? No. All Austrians. Just as our officers were all Russians. This was the only Swiss I came across. I'll never trust the Swiss again. He cheated us, humbugged us into giving him fifty able-bodied men for two hundred confounded worn-out chargers. They weren't even edible. We were two children in the hands of that consummate soldier, Major. Simply two innocent little children. What was he like? Oh, Raina, what a silly question. He was like a commercial traveler in uniform, bourgeois to his boots. Sergius, tell Catherine that queer story his friend told us about him. How he escaped after a Slivnitsa. You remember about his being hit by two women? Oh yes, quite a romance. He was serving in that very battery I so unprofessionally charged. Being a thorough soldier, he ran away like the rest of them, with our cavalry at his heels. To escape their attentions, he had the good taste to take refuge in the chamber of some patriotic young Bulgarian lady. The young lady was enchanted by his persuasive commercial traveler's manners. She very modestly entertained him for an hour or so, and then called in her mother lest her conduct should appear unmaidenly. The old lady was equally fascinated, and the fugitive was sent on his way in the morning, disguised in an old coat belonging to the master of the house who was away at the war. Your life in the camp has made you coarse, Sergius. I did not think you would have repeated such a story before me. She is right, Sergius. If such women exist, we should be spared the knowledge of them. Oh, nonsense. Why does it matter? No, Petkov. I was wrong. I beg your pardon. I have behaved abominably. Forgive me, Raina. And you too, madam. The glimpses I have had of the seamy side of life during the last few months have made me cynical. But I should not have brought my cynicism here, least of all into your presence, Raina. I- Tough and nonsense, Sergius. That's quite enough fuss about nothing. A soldier's daughter should be able to stand up without flinching to a little strong conversation. Come, it's time for us to get to business. We have to make up our minds how those three regiments are to get back to Philippopolis. There's no forage for them on the Sophia route. Come along. Oh, Paul, can't you spare Sergius for a few moments? Raina has hardly seen him yet. Perhaps I can help you settle about the regiment. My dear madam, impossible, you- You stay here, my dear Sergius, there's no hurry. I have a word or two to say to Paul. Now, dear, come and see the electric bell. Oh, very well, very well. Am I forgiven? My hero, my king, my queen. How I have envied you, Sergius. You have been out in the world, on the field of battle, able to prove yourself they're worthy of any woman in the world, whilst I have had to sit at home inactive, dreaming, useless doing nothing that could give me the right to call myself worthy of any man. Dearest, all my deeds have been yours. You inspired me. I have gone through the war like a knight in a tournament, with this lady looking on at him. And you have never been absent from my thoughts for a moment. Sergius, I think we too have found a higher love. When I think of you, I feel that I could never do a base deed or think an ignoble thought. My lady and my saint. My lord and my... G shh, shh, shh. Let me be the worshipper, dear. You little know how unworthy even the best man is of a girl's pure passion. I trust you. I love you. You will never disappoint me, Sergius. 
Hush! I can't pretend to talk indifferently before her. My heart is too full. I will go and get my hat, and then we can go out until lunchtime. Wouldn't you like that? Be quick. If you are away five minutes, it will seem five hours. Luca, do you know what the higher love is? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> a very fatiguing thing to keep up for any length of time, Luca. One feels the need of some relief after it. Perhaps you would like some coffee, sir. Thank you, Luca. Oh, sir, you know I didn't mean that. I'm surprised at you. I am surprised at myself, Luca. What would Sergius, the hero of Slivnitsa, say if he saw me now? What would Sergius, the apostle of the higher love, say if he saw me now? What would the half dozen Sergiuses who keep popping in and out of this handsome figure of mine say if they caught us here? Do you consider my figure handsome, Luca? Let me go, sir. I shall be disgraced. Oh, will you let go? No. Then stand back where we can be seen. Have you no common sense? Ah, that's reasonable. I may have it seen from the windows. Miss Raina is sure to be spying about after you. Take care, Luca. I may be worthless enough to betray the higher love, but do not you insult it. Not for the world, sir, I'm sure. May I go on with my work, please, now? You are a provoking little witch, Luca. If you were in love with me, would you spy out of windows on me? Well, you see, sir, since you say you are half a dozen different gentlemen all at once, I should have a great deal to look after. Witty as well as pretty. No, I don't want your kisses. Gentlefolk are all alike. You making love to me behind Miss Raina's back, and she doing the same behind yours. Luca! It shows how little you really care. If our conversation is to continue, Luca, you will please remember that a gentleman does not discuss the conduct of the lady he is engaged to with her maid. It's so hard to know what a gentleman considers right. I thought from you trying to kiss me that you had given up being so particular. Devil, devil! <laughs> I expect one of the six of you is very like me, sir, though I am only Miss Raina's maid. Which of the six is the real man? That's the question that torments me. One of them is a hero, another a buffoon, another a humbug, another perhaps a bit of a black god. And one, at least, is a coward. Jealous like all cowards. Luca. Yes? Who is my rival? You shall never get that out of me, for love or money. Why? Never mind why. Besides, you will tell that I told you and I should lose my place. No, on the honor of a, of a man capable of behaving as, as I have been behaving for the last five minutes, who is he? I don't know. I never saw him. I only heard his voice through the door of her room. Damnation! How dare you! Oh, I mean no harm. You've no right to take up my words like that. The mistress knows all about it. And I tell you that if that gentleman ever comes here again, Miss Raina will marry him, whether he likes it or not. I know the difference between the sort of manner you and she put on before one another and the real manner. Now listen you to me. Not so tight. You're hurting me. That doesn't matter. You have stained my honor by making me a party to your eavesdropping. And you have betrayed your mistress. Please. That shows that you are an abominable little clod of common clay with the soul of a servant. You know how to hurt with your tongue as well as with your hands. But I don't care. Now I've found out that whatever clay I'm made of, you're made of the same. As for her, she's a liar. And her fine airs are a cheat. And I'm worth six of her. Luca! A gentleman has no right to hurt a woman under any circumstances. I beg your pardon. That sort of apology may satisfy a lady. But what use is it to a servant? Oh! You wish to be paid for the hurt? No. I want my hurt made well. How? Never. I'm ready. What's the matter? Have you been flirting with Luca? 
No, no! How can you think such a thing? Forgive me, dear. It was only a jest. I am so happy today. I am sorry to disturb you, children, but Paul is distracted over those three regiments. He does not know how to get them to Philippopolis, and he objects to every suggestion of mine. You must go and help him, Sergius. He's in the library. Ugh, but we are just going out for a walk. I shall not be long. Wait for me just five minutes. I shall go round and wait in full view of the library's windows. Be sure you draw father's attention to me. If you are a moment longer than five minutes, I shall go in and fetch you. Regiments or no regiments. Very well. <laughs> Imagine their meeting that Swiss and hearing the whole story. The very first thing your father asked for was the old coat we sent him off in. A nice mess you have got us into. The little beast. Little beast? What little beast? To go and tell. Oh, if I had him here, I'd stuff him with chocolate creams till he couldn't ever speak again. Don't talk nonsense. Tell me the truth, Raina. How long was he in your room before you came to me? Oh, um, I forget. Cannot forget. Did he really climb up after the soldiers were gone? Or was he there when that officer searched the room? No. Yes, I think he must have been there then. You think? Oh, Raina. Raina, will anything ever make you straightforward? If Sergius finds out, it is all over between you. Oh, I know Sergius is your pet. I sometimes wish you could marry him instead of me. You would just suit him. You would pet him and spoil him and mother him to perfection. Well, upon my word. I always feel a longing to do or say something dreadful to him. To shock his propriety. To scandalize the five senses out of him. I don't care whether he finds out about the chocolate cream soldier or not. I have hope he may. And what should I be able to say to your father, pray? Oh, poor father. As if he couldn't help himself. Oh, if you were only ten years younger. Well? There's a gentleman just called, madam. A Servian officer. A Servian? How dare he? Oh, I forgot. We are at peace now. I suppose we shall have them calling every day to pay their compliments. Well, if he is an officer, why don't you tell your master? He is in the library with Major Saranov. Why do you come to me? But he asks for you, madam. And I don't think he knows who you are. He said the lady of the house. He gave me this little ticket for you. Captain Blunchley. That's a German name. Swiss, madam, I think. Swiss? What is he like? He has a big carpet back, madam. Oh, heavens! He's come to return the coat. Send him away. Say we're not at home. Ask him to leave his address, and I'll write to him. Oh, stop! That will never do. Wait! The master and Major Saranov are busy in the library, aren't they? Yes, madam. Bring the gentleman out here at once. And be very polite to him. Don't delay. Here. Leave that here, and go straight back to him. Yes, madam. Luca! Yes, madam. Is the library door shut? I think so, madam. If not, shut it as you pass through. Yes, madam. Stop! He will have to go out that way. Tell Nicola to bring his bag here after him. Don't forget. His bag? Yes, here as soon as possible. Be quick. Oh, how, how, how can a man be such a fool? Such a moment to select. Captain Blenchley, I am very glad to see you, but you must leave this house at once. My husband has just returned with my future son-in-law, and they know nothing. If they did, the consequences would be terrible. You are a foreigner. You do not fear our national animosities as we do. We still hate the Servians. The only effect of the peace on my husband is to make him feel like a lion balked of his prey. If he discovered our secret, he would never forgive me, and my daughter's life would hardly be safe. Will you, like the chivalrous gentleman and soldier you are, Leave at once before he finds you here. At once, gracious lady. I only came to thank you and return the coat you lent me. If you will allow me to take it out of my bag and leave it with your servant as I pass out, I need to detain you no further. Oh, you must not think of going back that way. This is the shortest way out. Many thanks. So glad to have been of service to you. Goodbye. But my bag... It will be sent on. You will leave me your address. True. Allow me. My dear Captain Blunchley. 
Oh, heavens. Those stupid people of mine thought I was out here instead of in the whole library. I saw you through the window. I was wondering why you didn't come in. Saranoff is with me. You remember him, don't you? <laughs> Welcome, our friend the enemy. No longer the enemy, happily. I hope you've come as a friend and not on business. Oh, quite as a friend, Paul. I, I was just asking Captain Bluntley to stay to lunch, but he declares he must go at once. Impossible, Bluntley. We want you here badly. We have to send on three cavalry regiments to Philippopolis, and we don't in the least know how to do it. Philippopolis. The forest is the trouble, eh? Yes, that's it. He sees the whole thing at once. I think I can show you how to manage that. Invaluable man, come along. Oh, the chocolate cream soldier. My dear Raina, don't you see that we have a guest here? Captain Bluntley, one of our new Serbian friends. How silly of me. I made a beautiful ornament this morning for the ice pudding. And that stupid Nicola has just put down a pile of plates on it and spoiled it. I hope you didn't think that you were the chocolate cream soldier, Captain Blanchley. <laughs> I assure you, I did. Your explanation was a relief. And since when, pray, have you taken to cooking? Oh, whilst you were away. It is her latest fancy. And has Nicola taken to drinking? He used to be careful enough. First, he shows Captain Bluntley out here when he knew quite well I was in the, hmm, library. And then he goes downstairs and breaks Raina's chocolate soldier. He must... Are you mad, Nicola? Sir? What have you brought that for? My lady's order, sir. Luca told me that... My orders? Why should I order you to bring Captain Bluntley's luggage out here? What are you thinking of, Nicola? I beg your pardon, sir. I'm sure... My fault, madam. I hope you'll overlook it. You'd better go and slam that bag, too. Down on Miss Raina's ice pudding. Be gone, you butterfinger donkey. Yes, sir. Oh, never mind, Paul. Don't be angry. Scoundrel. He's got out of hand while I was away. I'll teach him. Oh, well. Never mind. Come, Blanchley, let's have no more nonsense about you having to go away. You know very well you're not going back to Switzerland yet. Until you do go back, you'll stay with us. Oh, do, Captain Blanchley. Now, Catherine, it's of you that he's afraid. Press him and he'll stay. Of course. I shall be only too delighted if Captain Blanchley really wishes to stay. He knows my wishes. I am at Madame's orders. That settles it? Of course. You see, you must stay. Well, if I must, I must. Mm -hmm.